Hello, good morning, everyone. So I see that not all participants are here yet. However, I think we can start uh, and we will join, uh, join soon. So uh, before I start, let me remind you that uh, this event is recorded uh, and it will be shared via Tula's Cluster social media channels. Uh, I am coordinator of Tula's Cluster. These are micro machining cluster. And I will moderate this event today together with Tadas Lipinskas from Tula's uh, member Optogamma. Uh, today we will have uh, our first online seminar on laser micro machining applications. Today's topic is laser micro machining for sensors and micro medical devices. Uh, we will hear uh, five presentations on this topic, and each presentation will take uh, 15 minutes and will be followed by five minutes uh, questions session. Before uh, jumping to the presentations, uh, we will start with a short intro of laser micro machining cluster uh, tools delivered by Tadas. Tadas, uh, please, you are welcome to share your screen. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm starting sharing my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. So I will introduce Tula's cluster. Uh, it is laser micro machining cluster, uniting laser industry experts. And uh, uh, currently we have 10 very active members. You see them on the right side. And uh, Tulas is proud that uh, members has the more than 20 years experience in this industry, uh, variety of patents and uh, cluster members uh, investing uh, a lot of their own turnover in, into R&D. And the products are exported worldwide, so starting from United States up to the East to, to the Japan. And cluster is located in Visoru Information Technology Park in Vilnius. So here on this slide, you can see the um, products delivered by the members of the cluster. And the cluster itself provides custom innovative laser micro machining solutions and services. Uh, R&D services, components for laser micro machining, including laser components, some vision systems, uh, precision metal parts, uh, control software for laser machines, optical engines, technologies, uh, laser machines itself, and the related uh, job shop services. Uh, currently, we have uh, about 160 uh, employees and uh, we are running uh, about 20 R&D projects. Uh, and uh, this year we started the uh, construction of new building that will integrate new manufacturing premises, new uh, laboratories. And here on the right side, you see us, uh, some of our customers, our member customers. And if you have any ideas related to laser micro machining, you want to join our cluster or send, searching for partners, you would like to join our networking events, you are very welcome to contact Maria to, to join our cluster. And uh, we would be happy to, to support you with our services. Yeah, so it's a short presentation. Maybe you have some questions. So I will try to answer. I think we can move to the presentations and um, anyone can ask questions uh, in the end about Tula's cluster. So now, uh, and thank you Tadas for the short intro. And now I would like to welcome uh, PhD Antana Surbas, CTO and uh, Chief Research Scientist of Workshop of Photonics. And he will talk about winning micromachining solutions for biotech. So please Antanas. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to share my screen. I hope you can see it. Good morning, everybody. Antana Sorbas is my name. 
and I'm from Workshop of Photonics. And as Maria said, uh, I'll tell you about uh, what uh, WOP has so far delivered for biotech companies and researchers, and what we are able to do in further steps. Uh, to those who doesn't know us, let uh, me introduce ourselves. Uh, who we are? We are pri private owned company, uh, 18 years plus working in femtosecond laser uh, machining with uh, high focus on glass where we made our biggest achievements. We own six uh, patents uh, and we use uh, two uh, patent licenses for providing uh, technologies and services. And we have 40 plus professionals. Um, most of them are master of bachelor science and uh, four PhD degrees. Uh, that work on the in R&D field. How usually we work? So if uh, someone uh, comes uh, to us with a challenge, we uh, work on solution to respond to this challenge. And usually uh, this feasibility study ends with uh, prototyping of something uh, which uh, is relevant to task uh, our customer has. Then we may start uh, production service until the demand that customer grows enough. And finally, we can transfer technology either simply by description or providing the hardware that uh, enables uh, that process we developed for the customer. It uh, works with every material because as you know, femtosecond lasers uh, can fabricate anything. It is glass, sapphire, ceramics, metal, and so on, and so on, and so on. But uh, I repeat, our biggest achievements are in glass fabrication. So what we can, uh, what we did, and what we can do more for biotech. One of the uh, most uh, achievements uh, in our practice is uh, laser microcutting. Again, it is for all types of materials, all types of shapes. We use uh, uh, dry processing in, and uh, uh, laser uh, induced uh, chemical etching as well. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, these cuts uh, can be really uh, fine. And uh, of course, uh, the examples you see on the left hand side uh, are targeting uh, biotech uh, uh, research and, and practice. Of course, uh, we use uh, laser micro drilling, especially glass, uh, but it can be any material. And uh, we work on volume modifications, starting from optical fibers uh, through inscribing uh, volume waveguides uh, in the transparent materials laser marking, and uh, we make some special optics uh, elements uh, that enable many of these processes uh, we listed before. And uh, along with that, uh, we also use laser ablation process and we can uh, uh, weld uh, our structures uh, we cut from glass with laser welding. So we are proud that uh, our technology outperforms uh, many other glass cutting uh, methods. If you uh, see what we, what we do, it is <clears throat> important that we can work with uh, very thin materials. It can be tempered, non-tempered glass. Cutting speeds uh, are very high compared to uh, comp competing technologies. And it can be free form cuts or uh, drilling. And just, just as a joke, uh, how many holes uh, can you drill in glass uh, per one minute? We achieved 50,000 uh, holes uh, per minute, which resulted in 3 million holes in 18 inch uh, wafer. And it took us 
45 minutes. Why would, why would you need this? Okay, let's go uh, to biotech applications. That's microfluidic chips. <clears throat> we recently uh, turned to uh, microfluidic uh, uh, devices and uh, we got some requests uh, to proceed to produce uh, uh, prototypes of uh, microfluidic uh, cells uh, from glass, which is uh, really important for developing new processes. It will never be as cheap as uh, standard uh, molding uh, production from, as, uh, from PMDS or uh, something like that. Uh, but uh, with glass, you have absolutely neutral uh, material that uh, can work in any uh, biological environment. And it's absolutely inertic. So what, what we can do with uh, those uh, structures we cut uh, in the glass, it can be uh, molded together, as you can see here. It is a five layer sandwich. There are two active layers with channels inside, one intermediate layer and two covering layers, and everything is uh, welded together. So uh, it means that you can, you can have uh, quite uh, interesting uh, shapes of your uh, microfluidic cells fully of glass. If you go to plastic, here you, you can see uh, scanning electron uh, micrograph of one channel. Uh, this is an example of a vertical channel we make uh, after making uh, horizontal channels. Uh, these layers are uh, glued together and we make uh, vertical channels uh, to interconnect uh, layers uh, <coughs> of uh, channels in in microfluidic cell. What is important that uh, we can achieve uh, very good wettability, which uh, helps uh, uh, working uh, for the capillary pumps. So, uh, another thing uh, we did, and uh, we have uh, quite steady orders for that, it's uh, multi-well plates. We produce them from uh, 100 uh, nanoliters up to 15 microliters. It can be single multi-layer structures. Uh, as I told before, it can be uh, welded together. It can be any, any shape and any layout in the standard uh, 96 to 384 uh, wells. And uh, uh, having in mind that uh, our technology keeps uh, surface uh, clean and uh, the edges uh, of uh, wells very sharp, uh, they are applicable for bonding if you need it later. So it can be, it can be welded uh, in our technology, it can be uh, bonded uh, uh, the standard uh, glass bonding technologies. Filters. Uh, what we did uh, uh, from metal, it is uh, various filters uh, for uh, application in the, it is not biotech, it is more medicine. So this is uh, uh, a filter for inhalator, which is uh, used uh, in practice uh, and we deliver many of them. And uh, uh, filters uh, or areas uh, of holes uh, that kind uh, can be used uh, as uh, for inhalators, for uh, nebulizers. And uh, it can start from uh, several microns in diameter up to, of course, uh, limit uh, of your work piece. But uh, I must admit that it is uh, only for, uh, for foils of metal which are quite uh, tricky material because uh, they start folding uh, uh, because of thermal influence when you drill so many holes next to each other. But we succeeded uh, to overcome this issue. One more thing uh, we are really proud of is uh, needles. Here you can see the probe uh, for biopsy for one single cell. If you want to take some uh, molecules uh, from your cell, 
you need very tiny uh, biopsy needle. It is several microns wide. Sorry. Uh, and uh, uh, the probing hole was uh, drilled in one side wall of the needle. It was a couple of uh, microns wide, but what is important, we succeeded to drill only one wall of the needle without damaging opposite one. And this is uh, thanks uh, to our uh, glass drilling technology. I repeat that it can be very, very precise, uh, precisely positioned and uh, very, uh, very precisely uh, kept dim dimensions. Another uh, application for uh, uh, these needles is uh, the metal needle for another uh, biotech, uh, biomedical R&D project. Uh, it is a needle with uh, tip diameter rounded uh, below five microns. Uh, biomedicine uh, usually uh, or often uh, needs uh, fibers to bring light uh, to the area where uh, some interaction uh, with human tissue uh, is done. So uh, we fabricate uh, quite precisely uh, fibers. Here you can see standard 125 micron fiber with uh, square holes inside uh, that uh, we're acting as uh, uh, testing cells. Some uh, material, uh, biological material was uh, put through these uh, holes and the light uh, going, pa passing by uh, was uh, interacting with uh, the material and uh, at the end of uh, the fiber, uh, the investigators uh, looked uh, what happened. As you can see, uh, these are quite straight with no taper and uh, very precisely placed uh, in the core of the fiber. Another request was to make a cylindrical lens in the fiber. As, as you can see, the form of the lens uh, was quite good and it worked uh, as it needed. One more thing of fiber processing is uh, uh, tip processing. And I'm sure uh, that uh, Femtica in the next or second next presentation will tell you how you can uh, make uh, some lenses uh, or cones on the tip of your fiber <clears throat> by 3D printing. But uh, we simply uh, ablate uh, this uh, quite uh, smoothly and it can be made as a diffuser, it can be side fire, it can be angled ends, it can be, it can be lens cone, positive cone, negative cone, whatever. One task uh, we made uh, for our customer was uh, micro-machining of uh, uh, capillaries. Sorry. So, uh, these capillaries uh, needed to be uh, to cut uh, uh, very precisely in, in length, uh, with very clean uh, cut uh, surfaces, and uh, uh, they were a little bit modified uh, over the length. So it is also quite popular uh, tool in, in biotech. Laser marking. <clears throat> so uh, it is. Uh, not very, very specific for, for uh, biotech and, and medicine, but uh, in many cases, you need the mark your cells for controllability and traceability of your, of your uh, uh, working. So that's why uh, we uh, made uh, some uh, marking efforts uh, for our uh, medical customers. Uh, and you, you can see an examples uh, which are uh, colorful in this case, but uh, we also uh, did it uh, uh, invisible in normal, in normal light, which uh, are developed only when irradiating with uh, some particular light like uh, green or red pointer. You can, you can see the part number, you can see the QR, QR code, 
you can see uh, how and what is marked uh, in, in, your, in your device. So I hope uh, all this uh, I uh, just told about uh, can be successfully used uh, for uh, biotech and, uh, and medical research and uh, application in medicine. So we are ready to help if anyone needs it. So, as we usually finish our uh, uh, talk, if you have a micro machining challenge, don't hesitate, contact us, and we most probably will find uh, you some solution which uh, can be developed up to uh, laser machine, which um, uh, embodies uh, this solution. On the right hand side, you can see list of uh, customers uh, that are working with in biotech and medical uh, areas. And uh, I must say that uh, they are really happy with what they pro we provided to them. So thank you for your attention and I'm ready for questions if you have some. Thank you, Antanas, very much for your presentation. Uh, I hope I I'm in time. Of course, we have a couple more minutes more. Uh, so, Linus Janoszkowskas, I see raised hand. So, please, Linus. Well, thank you very much for a very exciting talk. Actually, the results look really good. Uh, maybe uh, just quick curiosity: Are was there any additional pass processing when you showed us these very nice uh, integrated fiber lenses? Did you just cut them and they have surface qualities which is required? Or do you do some annealing, etching, or anything of that kind? Uh, some, some annealing uh, is needed sometimes, but normally it is laser only. Thank you. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Yes, we have. Uh, so, uh, Naren is asking, how do you produce multicolor laser pattern inside the glass, Antanas? So it is uh, it is quite quite tricky process. Uh, we modify uh, refracted index uh, along with uh, producing uh, uh, some kind of uh, periodic nanostructures uh, we also use for uh, manufacturing uh, special optics. It is a uh, separate field, uh, <laughs> needs uh, quite good theory. So uh, actually uh, we inscribe uh, birefringent uh, structures, which are a couple of uh, microns uh, wide, and, and we organize them appropriately to get uh, this uh, colored uh, scattering. May, may I ask a um, question? Uh, Antanas, uh, you told about uh, laser, laser welding, and uh, does this apply to fibers as well uh, for fiber splicing? Or this no. is no, no, no. Uh, we, uh, we use uh, this laser welding for flat surfaces, as uh, many, many people do, In, instead of uh, bonding. Uh, sometimes it's uh, more suitable uh, to make uh, welded uh, zones around your cuts. Okay, thanks. Yes, Tadas, please. I have a short question. Maybe Antanas, you can uh, present what, what technical capabilities do you have? What kind of lasers, pulse durations, and wavelengths you, you have in your facilities? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, lasers that are working uh, with uh, uh, on one, one micron uh, 1030, 1064, uh, as usually, and the harmonics of those, uh, meaning that uh, uh, green, blue, and the uh, UV. Uh, and uh, we use, uh, in most cases, we use uh, uh, light conversion lasers. It is pharos or carbide, meaning that it is. Uh, 170 to 10 picos, uh, femtoseconds to 10 uh, uh, picoseconds. But uh, we have also amplitude systems, laser, uh, uh, Tangor, 
and uh, Lumentum uh, Pico blade, which uh, one uh, tango is uh, 500 femtoseconds, and Pico blade is uh, 13, uh, uh, 500 femtoseconds, and uh, Pico blade is uh, 13 uh, picoseconds. So it is a quite wide range uh, of uh, machines we have. And uh, the laser power is up to 100 uh, watts. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one more question from Nadam from United Spectrum. Uh, it is, uh, uh, any, do you have any specific uh, laser wavelength to achieve uh, the multicolor laser pattern inside the glass? No, uh, we use pr principal harmonics, one micron. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more questions? Uh, if no, we can move forward. And uh, if you have questions later, you can ask uh, them after all the presentation to Antanas. Uh, so now uh, let's invite uh, Linus uh, Janoszauskas, uh, Chief Scientific Officer of Femtica. And he will present femtosecond laser 3D micro manufacturing of medical devices. So please, Linus, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for a kind introduction. I apologize if there is some echo, but this was the only room in where I uh, live now in Switzerland. So uh, hope it's not too annoying. Otherwise, I will start. So uh, as was presented, we will talk about how femtosecond lasers can be used for micro manufacturing of medical devices. Now, a few words about Femtica. So Femtica is a spin-off from Vilnius University, uh, founded in around uh, 2013. Uh, and basically, as most of us know, uh, Vilnius University Laser Research Center is a world-renowned uh, photonics and laser research institution. And we were working with laser material processing. And at some point, we just figured out that we have enough know-how and ambition to go commercial. And of course, we're based in, Lille, in Sunrise Valley, Venus. At the moment, we have around 40 employees, up, out of which uh, several are PhDs and also PhD students. And this signifies the fact that Femtica is very heavily invested in uh, research and development of these technologies. And unsurprisingly, for this reason, we have various R&D projects which are funded by European Union, such as Horizon 2020, Eurostars, Eureka, also some Lusanian programs such as Experiment. And, and of course, we work very closely with our customers uh, to make sure that uh, our R&D goes to them as well. And we also try to be active members of various communities, including Lusanian Laser Association, uh, EPIC, and of course, Tulas, which uh, I would like to thank you for inviting us today. Now, what we bring to the table is based on the fact that currently, uh, and to quite large part due to advances made by Lusanian laser engineers, we have highly tunable femtosecond laser system. And for, a very, and for a very long time, it was considered that if you have a specific technology, uh, you need a specific setup for this. So let's say you need you want to do additive manufacturing, you need special setup for that, selective blast section, another setup, ablation, maybe another setup. But looking fundamentally, it all boils down to getting precise laser parameters and in simplified terms, correct intensity and maybe thermal regime. And in all fairness, all of this can be achieved with one highly tunable amplified femtosecond laser system, similar to those that produce light conversion uh, and some other producers. And this basically allows us to have kind of toolbox approach to various laser processing regimes. So for this particular uh, presentation, the relevant processing regime is what's called cold processing or just ablation. And it was talked quite a lot by the previous speaker and I will not go into too much detail about that. But the idea is that you just focus your laser light and due to ultra fast light matter interaction, the cuts can be extremely precise and extremely clean and they can be used for virtually any material. Uh, glasses were discussed in detail last, in last presentation. Over the years, we did them as well, including polymers and metals. 
Then, if we want some more uh, advanced uh, surface properties, we can actually tune the laser parameters in such a way that we achieve what's called hierarchical surface structures. And then we can basically do the, uh, the wettability of the surfaces as well as photonic properties. So as these uh, inscribed features in glass were presented previously, something similar can be done on surfaces or on metals as well using this subdiffraction fabrication technique. Then if we want some more advanced shapes uh, in 3D but out of glass, instead of just using direct removal with a laser, we can actually use laser to describe very specific modifications which tailor the edge ray of the glass uh, when you put it in something, let's say a scale H or HF. And then basically we have almost a uh, opposite process of 3D printing where we remove parts, mainly parts which were exposed to the laser. And then we get very precise, quite high surface, uh, quite good surface roughness glass structures. And I have to stress that this is applicable to quite complex 3D structure fabrication, like these ball joints shown on the right, which basically are assembly free. So basically we fabricated, we took one piece of glass, we inscribed what was needed and just etched out these edges with embedded moving structures. And of course we deal with additive manufacturing as well. It is called quite widely as two photon polymerization, but also sometimes 3D laser lithography is similar. And the name of the game here is that we have very high resolution and we have very wide selection of the materials, starting with such a exotic uh, cells, such as exotic polymers like proteins, and ending with, let's say, something like glass like hybrid organic and organic material. And the idea with this technology is that we're just focusing laser light into a photoactive present. We then point by point induce uh, irreversible chemical change, which is then stable enough to withstand organic solvent. And this is how we print a 3D structure. And because of that, it's very flexible. It's easy to do for specific applications. And uh, as seen in the last two pictures, it also allows to do assemble free uh, micromechanical structures we can, which can then move and perform some specific function. Now, throughout the years, uh, we actually worked very hard to achieve higher repeatability and higher flexibility of our structures. And because when we, when we moved from academia to more of an industrial application, we realized that this is the name of the game, basically being able to achieve correct result every time, each time. And for instance, I can proudly say that this polymer squid was printed in a single go. Uh, we also managed to do a glass-based Geneva mechanism, which is also assembly free. So this little movable structure is actually made out of single glass piece that was just etched out. And then we have uh, control of wettability as well as metals. So basically, we have this toolbox. Uh, we basically, at the moment, uh, master it, and we put everything in what we call a laser manufacturer, which is our primary product and primary setup. So basically, it uses amplified femtosecond laser systems, most likely pyros or carbide laser. Uh, it's very highly tunable for basically all of the processes I just showed to you. Also, it allows stitch remanufacturing of, over the entire fabrication field. It uses our own software, which is at the same time quite flexible and relatively easy to use. And our system is made in such a way that it uh, allows a lot of add-ons and it's modular. So even when we have customers with relatively older systems, we still can backwards improve them with new modules. And we did it for some of our customers already. So basically when we create these new technologies and new ways to process materials, those who bought our systems previously are not uh, left uh, behind. Now very briefly how Femtica works. Uh, we do basic research for our customers if they need it. Uh, we basically look to their problem and either offer our own solution or just do exactly what they ask us. Then we make sure that this technology is repeatable and, oh, sorry, and works well, uh, which is development stage. 
and then we create a special custom build system for the customer. I have to stress that customers come to us in every of these stages and sometimes they just stop at some specific stage. For instance, some of our customers just want to have system and that's it. Some of our customers want just research, basically they have an idea and they want us to fabricate it because having a system would be unfeasible. Or some of our customers actually want just batch production to be realized at our facilities, which we can also facilitate. But of course, this seminar has a topic and that topic is medical device fabrication. And my second part of the talk will be how we contributing to this field at the moment. So challenges in, in, future, in current medicine and current medicine, medical development are going basically towards uh, a lot of different and somewhat contradictory challenges. Because first we want medicine to be individualized. We want to make sure that we're treating specific patients in a specific way. Also, it has to be uh, at point of care and accessible. Uh, if someone can do something in New York and you have problem in Lusania, it might not work that well. So you want to have accessibility basically everywhere in the world, including less developed countries. It also has to be effective and flexible to basically account for the challenges of the modern world, such as let's say a corona for example. And which is the most uh, contradictory requirement, it also has to be affordable because the medical field proposed a lot of very exciting uh, concept for devices and, and ways of treating diseases or performing some measurements. But in a lot of cases, they are hard to reproduce and they are like one of a kind structures that cannot be produced on mass. And to reach all of these goals or are an appropriate compromise, of course, we need interdisciplinary research. So this is why I will be referring to a lot of our partners in this research. Uh, in this presentation, and we are basically the ones that take the toolbox that I presented previously and applying it by the designs proposed by our partners in medical field. So first uh, structure that I would like to present to you is micromolecule separator, which is the, being developed with our partners in, in uh, Vito Cosmagnus University. And the idea is very simple. We do a microfluidic system uh, and we do it out of glass because it, was, it can be done very fast. And at the same time, we just integrate filters with a specific pore size that can filter either macromolecules or macromolecule uh, conglomerations. And the idea is that because it's cut out of glass, it should be cheap and it also operates passively. Basically, we can just use syringe, press something in and it should work. So we did some structures right away and basic, basically because our goal was to go as fast as possible, uh, we basically sacrificed some of the surface quality at first, but the adhesion of filters were quite good and we were quite uh, happy with the initial result. We tried some post-processing steps, but it proved to be not that great uh, as we expected. But what did work was actually using of uh, femtosecond bursts. And basically, uh, we are only now really getting into this. And there will be actually a talk in this seminar. So I highly encourage you to listen about it. And that's why I skip most of the technical details. But basically, it allows us to both enhance the fabrication throughput and at the same time enhance the surface structure. And adhesion of filter is good. So we seal these channels with thermal sealing, just again to save on laser time. And the idea is very simple. We just put a clear plastic cover slip. We heat it up to a specific, to a specific temperature. Also, because we're using hybrid organic and organic photopolymers, filters are not in any way influenced by this heating. And then basically we have very nice sealing, no leaks. And basically, these structures were manufactured and given to our partners in Vito Cosmetics University uh, at the beginning of April for testing. Next yes, I'm is... sorry, we have one minute left. Okay, so that's, that's interesting because it shows two minutes for me, but whatever. So very briefly, another field is, of course, the scaffolds for the cell growth. 
which is uh, made using two-photon polymerization. And the idea here is that we want movement. So we, we're doing it out of the rigid material, but in a flexible shape, which is the chain name. Uh, and in this way, we are saving up on the material development and at the same time, we are getting function because these scaffolds, albeit made out of hard materials, could be used in a living tissue, living and moving tissue. And they are now being tested for biocompatibility, but the initial results are quite well. And finally, we're also working on microfluidical flow meters. And this and previous structure was developed with uh, Lithuanian Healthcare University, and this one with Columbus Technological University and in a, a Center of Innovative Medicine. And the idea is that we are combining filter, not filter, valve and the moving plate into one structure, which basically acts as a dynamic capacitor. And again, because we can't, can tap in into polymer chemistry advances, we can selectively metal code it with metal making it conductive. So basically we can make a conductive 3D structures this way. And we don't need that much of a thickness to achieve quite low resistance. And we integrated it in, into not ablated, but into edge channels because we need a better overall uh, channel quality. And at the same time, we wanted to make these structures 3D in, or in other words, inside the volume of the glass. So again, uh, I somehow maybe missed uh, when the time the timer started, but overall, we consider the electrolyzer writing as a powerful tool in biomedical structure fabrication. And uh, I'm very happy to say that this is available commercial state-of-the-art solution, which can accommodate a lot of different kinds of researchers and uh, hopefully bring a true breakthrough in the field. So thank you. Thank you, Linus, a lot. Uh, sorry for pushing you a bit, but now we have uh, three minutes for four questions. So let's start with Thomas. Um, what is the record of resolution in 2PP process? You mentioned uh, under 100 nanometers, but how much less? So basically, it depends on who you ask. Uh, the thing is that the smallest features that were done in lab without repeatability by other groups go to down to 10 nanometers. But realistically, something like 250 nanometers is, uh, is something you can expect without any cross-processing steps or some, some, some other things. We ourselves done under 100 nanometers, but then you have to try and repeatability is quite bad. Thanks. And the second one uh, from Cliff. Uh, are you using a synchronized galvo to stage motion process? If so, what is the field of you typically to, of those galvo? Uh, so basically, we are using it. It's basically a feature offered by Aratec. And the field of the uh, field of optics depend on the optic itself. We're using actual very different optics. We're using 1.4 NA, 0.95 NA, 0.8 NA, all the way down to just simple as theta lenses. So the biggest working field we can achieve with f theta lens are in centimeters. And the smallest one with 1.4 NA is 125 micrometer uh, square. So basically it depends on the optic. But with synchronization, we can just move centimeters without any switching. Thank you very much. And another one, uh, how do you overcome stitching errors? Similar answer with synchronization. Okay. And uh, how long does it take to make a such filter in a micro channel? Uh, this, this particular filter, because we're still experimenting with the, uh, uh, with the filter size and, and, and et cetera, uh, I'm now trying to remember around few minutes, maybe up to 15. It also depends on the width of the channel. But at the moment, this technology is quite fast. And for instance, producing such a scaffold, which is these actual, these ones actually are in size of a millimeters, it takes uh, less than an hour, maybe tens of minutes. Because the fabrication speed, again, due to synchronization and the stages that we're using, uh, is actually quite high. So this is why we're not afraid of to show these relatively big structures because they can be. Most of them can actually be done under one hour. 
Thanks, and I think we have uh, one more minute to one more question. So maybe somebody else would like to ask, speak up. Yeah, because I was kind of in a hurry to call you. Yeah. Or maybe Linus, you didn't have time to say something important, so you can. Well, basically, I just ran through it. So instead of talking calmly, I was in a hurry, but basically, this is it. And uh, the idea here is, as I said, to use all of these technologies together as a toolbox and basically accommodate the needs of actually very highly demanding field of medicine. Because uh, let's say I didn't mention the micro optics, but for micro optics, it's straightforward. You just get your ship and you get your surface rest. But to make something which is medical is actually quite quite a challenge. And I'm happy that we as Femtech and overall, we as laser people can contribute to this. Okay, thank you very much for your nice presentation. And now I would like to welcome the second speaker. It's Agidius Vanaga, CEO of Vana Technologies. And his presentation will be on technology for high aspect ratio laser drilling of plastic, biomedical tool purposes. So Gideus, uh, please share your screen and present. Yes, I am share the screen. You can see. I hope. So hello everyone. Uh, I will present uh, information about our uh, abilities to make some uh, high spec ratio drilling in plastic for bio or medical uh, tools uh, fabrications. So firstly, I would like to introduce our company. It is laser processing uh, technologies a dedicated uh, tools development. And we uh, uh, have some uh, patent portfolio, three families, uh, totally about 27 patents already issued. And uh, uh, we offer uh, some services for, for customers, feasibility research, techno technology development, and job shop uh, services. Uh, our products are icicle and thermal uh, laser cleaving uh, scribing technology and freezing, freezer uh, series optical engines, which is dedicated for different materials like silicon, sapphire, and other. Uh, also, uh, recently we make some uh, investigation and some uh, inquiry from customers about drilling of plastic and we develop uh, new well technology uh, for the high aspect ratio plastic, uh, holes in plastic drilling. Uh, here you can see some uh, example for uh, drilling of holes uh, with diameter about 80 micrometers and depth uh, uh, aspect ratio for this example is about 10. Uh, and this is uh, usually uh, is for uh, lens for eye, artificial lens for eye some wire fixing uh, holes uh, uh, in order to to make some uh, uh, holding uh, uh, wire inside the tissue of human eye. Uh, here we can control the depths of uh, drilling and uh, some some shape possibility to have some shape control of the uh, holes and uh, uh, quite uh, how to say simple uh, technology we use for adjustment of femtosecond uh, beam uh, parameters and get the uh, no melting effect at all so for uh, more small uh, whole diameter, we uh, make some experiments and we developed some uh, semi-industrial system for 
uh, small uh, amount of uh, product uh, manufacturing. And for our experiments, we can show uh, uh, some pictures. Uh, this is uh, some vessel of uh, less than one millimeter uh, uh, volume uh, diameter. And we make here uh, a number of holes, which is uh, about 15, 20 micrometers in diameter. And uh, uh, the depth of this uh, structure is about 100, 200 micrometers. This is for, for drying of specimen inside the uh, holder for for some uh, freezing purposes. Uh, and here we <coughs> use some, uh, uh, this is some kind of capillarity effect for to dry the specimen. And we got the result with the quite uh, low melting temperature plastic, about 180, uh, degrees and we can see here is uh, uh, in, inlet uh, beam uh, site and outlet beam site and this is really not very big uh, uh, difference uh, for the uh, roll diameter uh, within 150-200 micrometers thickness of wall. Here you have a little bit more uh, uh, roll drilling, and we can control uh, this uh, process without any melting and some kind of interaction between holes. Uh, uh, you you see that period of the of the holes is uh, about twice of diameter of the hole, and we get good result without any any interconnection of this. Uh, capillary uh, system for, uh, how to say, in this small vessel. And if you can see, if you want to see profile, you can see this profile, sure that the walls is not very uh, vertical, it means not very uh, same uh, diameter, but for them certain depths uh, of, to, to drill the uh, thickness of some uh, plastic structure, we can control uh, our parameters to achieve very, 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 very similar input and output of the holes. You can see here some uh, shape of the holes. We have some little bit melting part about one, uh, one micron plus minus uh, 0 0.5 micron and uh, really uh, uh, very easy to later if you can see uh, how to say it before, you see here a little bit some uh, uh, dust, but it's easy to remove uh, even uh, with some uh, water or some solution of uh, chemicals. Uh, that is it. Uh, my presentation is short because we are just uh, with this work, we are a little bit connected with uh, medical and biomedical uh, uh, field. And if you have some questions or some kind of uh, wish to make some collaboration, we are open for, for your uh, inquiries and uh, questions as well. So that is it. Thank you, Agidius, for your presentation. So now you said it was short, so we have 10 minutes for questions and we can have a longer discussion then. So we have one question in the chat. So polycarbonates, uh, are they possible for drilling? Yes, uh, almost any material as, as uh, our uh, presenters told that uh, there is no any uh, problems for uh, for the femtosecond uh, processing any materials it's uh, easy. It, it, it is possible to to make processing 
for for any material so that is just the question how you will do what parameters we will you will choose and really you should take into account everything uh, including them some properties of material but in general possible to 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 achieve also question of money if you want to have some very exotic uh, process uh, you should uh, prepare some amount of investment for this okay thanks um Tadi, uh, maybe you have some questions prepared for Gideus. yeah please so i have a question uh, uh, what kind of other technologies not maybe related with the medical uh, applications do you have in-house uh, and uh, yeah what what are the other applications what are the other materials you are processing it's one question second question uh, do i understand correctly that you provide uh, r d services or as well as equipment um, uh, other materials it's maybe not not the polymer materials really some kind of uh, 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 glass, sapphire, silicon, any materials which is using mainly for microelectronics. We are working mainly on on uh, processing of the materials, like uh, dicing of the material, sometimes drilling, and uh, uh, in general, uh, we can also provide some, as, as you told, some R&D uh, R&D process. That what I demonstrate now was some kind of R&D because our customer have no possibility to to do this uh, size of the holes uh, by other uh, methods, and we got quite good result. And he. How to say uh, accept this as, as the best result what he tried to do uh, to find so uh, in general we can we can also we already have some some uh, projects for for laser pinning and we are preparing project for laser uh, polishing uh, uh, 10 per second laser polishing so we work in on some few few directions. And I see Titas has questions, so Titas, please ask. Yes, uh, Egidius, uh, just uh, like a general question. So typically you use a, a femtosecond laser, but what is the average power you can uh, utilize uh, within your technology? What is the power needed? Um, uh, for our process, uh, power is not very high. It means that the laser, which is really average or even small output power, it's enough. We don't work with with, a, with a very thick materials or some kind of uh, um, uh, uh, how to say hard materials which uh, require some some high power. We we can use. Uh, in some processes, we can use about one watt, two watt output power for for very, very, very exotic and very uh, fast process. But if, uh, for example, for drilling of holes uh, within one minute, fifty thousand, we should uh, think about quite uh, quite high power and and uh, it means that average or some some more than average and uh, really some kind of di diffractive uh, uh, devices uh, on the beam in order to divide the uh, uh, beam into many beams in this case sure uh, to increase throughput you need increased power it means that you should keep power in one point uh, some fixed power even it is very small, but if you want to make many holes, then you should multiply by holes uh, number this power. So for us, uh, for the moment, uh, for, our, for our investigation, this is enough uh, really uh, 
up to 10 watt ten per second laser, but if if will be request to increase throughput, in this case we should multiply uh, watts uh, by some coefficient in order to to get uh, required throughput. Any more questions? If not, maybe I get you so you would like to add something to your presentation. We still have a bit of time. Uh, okay, so we, we don't have uh, any 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 more. I don't prepare any 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 more information. In general, I can add that in the case of uh, plastic, we can do this. Uh, uh, for this size of the diameter, quite uh, easy. And for example, our this semi-industrial uh, device uh, is quite uh, with quite big throughput in order to to get back money from the system. It means that within one or two years you can get back money which you invest in the system for some very, very quite low uh, product uh, price. So that is, I cannot add more uh, for this tema. But we have a question from Tadas. Yeah. yeah, I have one more question about the wavelengths you are using uh, in your laboratories. So do you, do you need uh, one micron wavelength or maybe you use you, you ultraviolet and the wall, what the pulse durations? Yeah. Uh, for different for different uh, tasks, we use different wavelengths and different pulse durations. It means that, but but we mainly working with femtosecond uh, grade uh, lasers, which, for example, pulse duration is from three hundred uh, femtosecond till ten picosecond. But uh, it's not not only. Uh, it means that uh, we just uh, uh, it means that adopt the laser for the process which we need to develop. It means that we don't fix some really laser and uh, would like to do everything with this laser. It means that we, we work with different materials. We study materials properties, uh, check the, uh, what, what properties of the material we got uh, have, and then we choose the laser pulse duration, uh, Wavelengths. It means that we are not uh, connected tightly with the, some fixed laser. Do I understand correctly that laser manufacturers can contact you for some feasibility studies for their applications? Yes, we 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 have some inquiries for some quite exotic uh, questions, and just we really uh, choose the. Uh, process uh, parameters. Thank you. Thanks everyone for this discussion. And now I would like to welcome Tadas Kildushes. Uh, he is CEO of Direct Machine and Control as well as of a new ambitious startup, Machine One. And Tadas will present device miniaturization by forming electrical machine one circuits directly on molded 3D parts. So Tadas, please share your screen, the stage is yours. Thank you. Hello everyone. Just a second. And I hope you see it fine. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I'm Tadas Kildushas, uh, CEO of Machine One, uh, a startup <clears throat> working on some laser laser machining technologies and laser machines uh, to enable those technologies. Excuse me. <laughs> And uh, uh, what I would like to talk uh, to talk about is device min miniaturization uh, that's enabled uh, 
by one of the technologies uh, for MID devices. Uh, so we'll look shortly into what are MIDs or molded interconnected devices. What are, what are current technologies uh, for that? What are the advantages of, of using MIDs? And also what are the drawbacks uh, of technologies, uh, of current technologies? And of course, we'll talk about SSL technology. So that's technology uh, which, uh, which we are building machines for and some uh, suggestions for new applications where it could be, could be beneficial. And we can discuss about that. So what is molded interconnected device or MID for short? So basically it's going from flat printed circuit board onto putting all the electronics on the part itself. Uh, we can put it on 3D part, on 2, 2D part, uh, but all the traces are done on the on the part part itself. As an as name says, uh, mostly it's molded plastic parts. <clears throat> and the main advantage of that it allows much tighter packaging of uh, components, so the device can be uh, can be made uh, significantly uh, smaller when you don't need uh, the PCB part itself. It allows for lower weight, uh, which again, sometimes it's very important and uh, in medical applications as well, for example, in some wearable devices. And it allows uh, functional surfaces. Uh, some not, me not medical and nonsense application, for example, uh, for functional surfaces, which we <clears throat> uh, explored is for uh, ergonomic keyboards where you need a 3D electronics uh, for convenient use. And current applications are mostly in automotive uh, for where it needs tight packaging. For example, things like steering wheel, where now a lot of electronics is being uh, squeezed into. Also consumer electronics. Uh, one of the biggest applications is printing antennas for mobile phones which can be printed uh, directly on phone case, uh, thus saving, uh, saving space and making your device thinner and thinner. Also some medical devices, as I said, some wearable devices, for example, hearing aids, uh, <clears throat> uh, some, some other devices that benefit from uh, making them smaller and lighter. And also in telecommunications for for, uh, for some antennas and, and similar devices. Uh, most of the technologies, well, several technologies that are available now, some of them are 3D printing like. So basically you are printing either uh, like printing your wire on, uh, on, on, a, on a surface or, or uh, making some plasma deposition. Uh, some of them are lithography based, which is quite similar to standard PCBs. Probably the most popular is laser direct structuring or LDS for short, uh, which is developed by LPKF in Germany. And that process is, as name suggests, uh, 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 used uh, or enabled by laser. Uh, special materials with uh, metal uh, additives inside them are used. Uh, traces are activated by laser and then chemical etching, well, not chemical etching, chemical uh, electro electroplating is used for, uh, for putting the uh, traces on the surface. And SSL, which is uh, in this way, a little bit similar to laser uh, direct structuring, uh, since for, uh, laser is being used. Uh, however, it provides some sig significant improvements and, and widens the scope of where it can be applied uh, by that. So let's talk a little bit more about that. SSL process is uh, a two or three step process, it depends on how you count it. So the first step is a uh, laser process where surface is built traces where electrical, electrical tracks will be, 
output is processed by laser. And then we have a stack of chemical processes for chemical activation uh, and following uh, for electroplating. Uh, typically would be a stack of copper and the nickel and gold for, uh, <clears throat> uh, for protection of, uh, of the tracks. And the good thing about, uh, about SSL process is uh, that it's, uh, it does not require any additives in the material itself. So that means that off the shelf standard materials can be used. And it means also that the price of the, of the material does not increase because we use the technology. So it allows SSL technology also to be used in, uh, in some cases where you need to learn to work with uh, large parts like front panel, for example, of, of the car. And it does not change uh, the material properties, uh, which is important also in the medical devices uh, since every new material needs to be uh, additionally approved. So here, new material, the same materials typically can be used. And as you can see, it's uh, tested on a bunch of polymers. Uh, also uh, on some ceramics like uh, silicon titanium uh, uh, aluminum, uh, citau aluminum oxide, also on, on some glasses, soda lime, fused silica, and as well on silicon. So uh, those electrical electrical tracks, electrical traces can be can be done on that. And since uh, shapes are uh, uh, since uh, technologies, quite delicate, so it does not damage the material, does not heat it up, the temperatures in all the process, in laser process and also in chemical process uh, is not high. So it can work both on large uh, 3D shapes, but also it can work on thin films, which can be, can be used in, in some different applications. Uh, <clears throat> another advantage of, of the technology is high adhesion strength. And it was tested uh, in Germany in uh, Hans Schickard uh, Institute, known for MIDs. And com it complies with all uh, standard requirements for MID devices. And adhesion strength depends from, uh, from material to material. Uh, but in any case, uh, it, uh, it exceeds uh, the thresholds usually uh, several times. And high adhesion strength also uh, allows to make reliable uh, traces uh, narrow. Uh, it can be done, well, depending on the material, but as you can see here in the pictures and also in the graph here, for plastics, it can go down to about 20 microns and spacing being 30 to 50 microns. On glasses and, and silicon, it can go uh, narrower to 12, 15 microns and, and still uh, be, uh, be reliable and have reliable conductivity. Uh, high adhesion strength also enables to use that on uh, flexible materials. So for example, here on the left, we have some examples on uh, PET films. And so with narrow tracks, we can also do it uh, barely visible. Uh, for example, once a track is uh, down to about 15, 20 microns, you really need to, to have that transparent material against some light and correct angle to see, uh, to see the traces. So we also see some potential uh, use in uh, touch screens uh, as well for, 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 for contacts. Uh, current applications uh, where SSL is being used and tested uh, is in some communications for, for some special ante antennas in automotive electronics. And here applications vary from uh, some uh, quite simple, like for example, heating elements uh, for automotive sensors to uh, integrating some electronics devices in uh, 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 interior of uh, automotive, in lighting of, 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 of the car, 
and so on. And also in some micro devices uh, and micro sensors, for example, uh, for some micro lasers, uh, can be electronics. It does, the device can be additionally miniaturized because uh, there is no need for additional P PC, uh, PCB in that. Some other applications where, where we see potential uh, in medical and sensing area is lab on chip because it can work on glass. Uh, it can also be combined with some microfluidics. Uh, in medical wearable devices, again, where uh, space and uh, weight saving is important and some, uh, some medical sensors, especially the ones that, again, uh, needs to be put in human body uh, where it needs to be as small as possible. So that's what I wanted to introduce you to. Uh, I'll, your questions are welcome. Uh, also, you can, you can contact me by email or just uh, or find me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Tadas, for your presentation. And I hope the audience is excited to ask questions. I have one question about the electrical properties. That, does it equal to PCB or can you compare on the different materials? You mentioned some polymers as well as glasses. Oh, uh, <clears throat> the copper is uh, electroplated copper. So resistivity is uh, several times higher than uh, your typical copper wire, uh, the monolith uh, copper, but it's still a uh, really good conductive. Uh, so uh, it's still really usable uh, without issues in, in most cases. And what about the degradation of, of these uh, tracks? Uh, depends on what's needed, depends on the material. Of course, uh, if you want to, to put uh, high power or high uh, temperature fluctuations on very narrow tracks, uh, it can be, uh, it can deg uh, degrade. But in general, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, still quite reliable. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Aldas Uronis. Uh, what type of laser do you use for laser activation, Thales? It's uh, it's a picosecond laser. Very short answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can make it longer. Aldas, it's from Expla, so you should know the laser quite well. Okay. Any more questions? What about the working areas? What the biggest size parts you can fabricate? Uh, currently in, uh, in, in lab setup, uh, it can be around 200 by 200. Uh, if it is 3D parts, of course, it can, be, can decrease a little bit in size. Also, what, uh, what we are working on is to, 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 to make it a roll-to-roll -roll process on some films, so it can be on really large areas. In principle, the pro laser processing here is uh, quite fast, and even large parts can be done, so then you are just limited by your uh, chemical bath for, for the chemical processes. Uh, for laser process, machine can be adapted for, for large parts as well. Yeah, and we have some more questions in the chat. Uh, first of all, uh, Gediminas from FTMC would like to add some comments. And of course, Gediminas, you are welcome, please. Thank you. So uh, regarding all the questions, so the property of the metal is a similar way, like a bulk metal. It's, it's a normal process used in all electronics, even for creating uh, PCB boards. Uh, ju ju just uh, technology adjust adjusted to 3D mainly and about that uh, uh, the same stability of the metal that's normally copper is used to make it like a conductor and that uh, well, what you need to resistance you simply make thickness of the layer 
And after that, normally nickel and gold is put on top to prevent from erosion or corrosion of the copper and also to, to keep it more useful for, for assembly like, like soldering. It could be some nickel gold or, or copper, silver, uh, Co 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 copper and uh, tin, it depends on the application. All the processes, chemical processes, is quite similar to, to used in normal electronic industry. The some are just sent to making, using, uh, how do you say, a knowledge of um, uh, our chemist uh, uh, researchers, uh, some adjusted technologies to be better performance. Thank you, Gerdemenas, for your comments. Uh, Tadas, would you like to react somehow? No, no. <laughs> okay, so... Um, mm -hmm. If no, then we have a question from Gediminas colleague, Irmantas. Uh, do you consider laser illumination for rapid thermal uh, annealing of electrical contacts used in semiconductor devices? There are some applications now being tested for, for semiconductors, for semiconductors packaging. Uh, but can't talk much about that. And one more question uh, from Cliff. Uh, are you going to build production machines? Yes, uh, machine one is, uh, is a startup uh, focusing on production machines for, for, for this technology. When they will be available to buy? Uh, pretty much, uh, well, uh, let's say like that. Uh, the prototype is uh, already already working in the lab, and basically, what needs to be done, it needs to be adapted for specific uh, application because uh, applications can be quite varying. It can be done for, as I said, thin film, so it would be a row to row system. It can be a 3D part, so then we need to take into account what shape of the part, uh, what size of the part, and how many of them we are doing in one go. Or it can be some simple flat parts. So for each for for each application, it needs to be to be adapted a little bit. Uh, so it's not a standard, fully not not a fully standard uh, system. So with a with a simple. Uh, 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 ramping up period, uh, it can be uh, for specific application, it can be produced in six to nine months. Okay, so when you have any groundbreaking news, we can share it via Tula's LinkedIn and other social media channels so that everyone would hear about that. So do we have any more questions from the audience? Then we can move on to the next presentation. Uh, thanks, Tadas, again, and thanks everyone for being active with your questions. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, uh, Titas Gertus, industrial sales engineer from Light Conversion. Yeah, please, Titas. Hello. Stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Uh, so today uh, I will present a tunable a second burst for various material processing, uh, which I believe is beneficial, uh, not only in producing uh, medical parts, sensors, uh, but also other devices. So a, a short uh, introduction about light conversion. So it was established in 1994. Uh, currently, we already have more than 300 employees. Uh, we delivered more than 5,000 systems uh, worldwide and uh, uh, to various universities, various companies uh, which uh, use femtosecond lasers for research and, and manufacturing. Uh, light conversion also builds uh, optical parameters, uh, OPCPA systems and uh, uh, RPS spectrometers. Uh, Timeline of the products. So the first product was uh, actually not a femtosecond laser. It, it, it was an optical parametrical amplifier. And the first uh, Faros laser was introduced in 2006. And then after two years, we introduced an industrial version of a Faros laser. Uh, in 2012, we introduced a spectrometer Harpia. 
and later development, uh, we introduced air-cooled femtosecond laser low power, uh, which is su suitable for micro machining. And then we increased uh, uh, actually quite dramatically the power of the carbide series. And last year we introduced uh, 80 watt carbide laser and uh, Faros uh, 20 watt two millijoule laser in the in, in the new package. Light conversion is uh, still privately owned company uh, with a turnover of 65 million euros. Uh, we have lots of talented. Uh, uh, people working, uh, motivated ones. Uh, we do have uh, more than 600 square meters of the clean room. Uh, clean rooms are needed to produce uh, reliable femtosecond laser sources. And we can build uh, more than two lasers per day plus uh, optical parametrical amplifiers. Uh, here on the right picture, as you can see the on the top of the current building, and uh, uh, we are also uh, adding a new building, which uh, uh, will increase our production capabilities even further. So we we hope that this building will be ready uh, in uh, September October. So the main product uh, Faros uh, comes in two packages. So the late, latest development is a PH two, and uh, the latest model is twenty watt uh, uh, two millijoule version, which can deliver pulse duration. Uh, of 190 femtosecond. Of course, pulse duration is tunable uh, from shortest to 10 picosecond or uh, even to 20 picosecond. Uh, you can uh, tune the frequency. Uh, fundamental wavelength is 1030. We can also uh, offer a harmonics module, uh, second, third, fourth, or even fifth harmonic. Uh, Yet another brand of lasers which we uh, uh, produce is a carbide series. Uh, carbide uh, is more orientated to uh, industrial clients and we uh, deliver more power. Uh, so as I mentioned last year, we introduced 80 watt. Uh, and uh, this, this year we also introduced a lower version of the uh, carbide series uh, just because some of the industries do not require uh, high average power. Also in our portfolio, we do have a short pulse version of the carbide, five watt, which is uh, perfect for uh, micro machining tasks. And uh, we introduced uh, uh, burst capabilities in both Faros and carbide. Uh, it's tunable gigahertz and megahertz burst. Uh, this is a patented technology, uh, so let's let's talk about it. So imagine that you have a simple laser running at uh, 100 kilohertz, so it emits uh, pulses, femtosecond pulses, uh, which are separated by 10 microsecond. Now we can, uh, for example, enable the megahertz burst uh, and select four pulses in megahertz burst. So this initial pulse is split it into four pulses, which have uh, four times lower uh, pulse energy. Or we can enable the gigahertz burst, for example, two pulses per gigahertz burst. Uh, or we can have both gigahertz and megahertz burst enabled at the same time. Of course, the pulse energy of individual pulses uh, decrease, but the total package pulse energy is the same as initial pulse. There are some differences between the Faros and carbide. So the, the main difference is uh, maybe intraburst pulse separation uh, in the gigahertz burst, but also the amount of uh, maximum number of pulses uh, one can deliver. For example, uh, maximum burst uh, number of pulses, uh, depending uh, on the laser repetition rate is shown in these curves. And uh, uh, what is the maximum frequency we can run the laser? So the laser typically base uh, repetition rate is uh, one or two megahertz, but uh, burst uh, works up to one megahertz. But at one megahertz, we can select 10 pulses uh, in gigahertz and 10 pulses in uh, megahertz bursts. So it, 
in the end, we can have a very high effective frequency, which is, uh, can be beneficial for certain uh, macro machining processes. Uh, let's uh, have a closer look how the burst inside the burst looks like. So here we see uh, on the left uh, the megahertz burst pulse train and uh, magnified uh, gigahertz pulse train. So, and uh, this uh, by burst, sorry for that, uh, is uh, easily config configurable through software. So you can uh, select how many the number of pulses in every burst. You can control the envelope. You can control the envelope individually. And uh, here are some examples of uh, different envelopes uh, for megahertz and gigahertz burst. Now I will show you some of the applications where the by burst uh, can be applied and uh, has certain advantages. So first, uh, let's have a look at the inward drilling. So without the burst, you can uh, drill a hole in 50 micrometers thick uh, inward foil uh, in uh, 600 microseconds. Uh, if you enable the gigahertz mode, so you can decrease the time to 400 microseconds. But now if you switch to megahertz mode, you can uh, reduce the time even more down to 80 microseconds per hole. Well, in this case, uh, the combination of uh, macro pulse, the gigahertz and the megahertz does not uh, uh, give advantage for the uh, speed, drilling speed. And you can see that using the gigahertz mode uh, and megahertz mode, we have uh, different results. So with gigahertz, one can, one delivers uh, more heat and uh, you can clearly see heat accumulation. While in megahertz drilling, you can see more contamination around the, the whole drill. So it depends what you need. If you want to, to be very fast, but you can allow some contamination around the hole, so you switch to megahertz mode. But if you want uh, and, uh, no contamination, but you can allow heat uh, accumulation in the, around your hole, so maybe gigahertz mode is better. Uh, our colleagues from uh, Center for Physical Sciences and Technologies uh, demonstrated that uh, using the megahertz burst and selecting three pulses per megahertz burst is uh, the most efficient uh, for ablating the copper. And uh, they did lots of experiment to, to prove it uh, for copper drilling, uh, copper milling, and uh, even demonstrated some really nice uh, three-dimensional structures uh, of uh, Lithuanian symbol Vitis uh, in the copper plate. Uh, in the electron microscope uh, photo on the right, one can see that also the ablated surface roughness is not that bad. It's uh, measured 400 nanometers. So megahertz burst uh, definitely can, can uh, be uh, advantageous uh, while ablating uh, high volumes of the material. Now for the gigahertz burst, uh, we, can, we can see that ablation efficiency actually decreases if we increase the amount of uh, pulses in the gigahertz burst, for example, in ablating stainless steel. Uh, so these are results coming from Hofschule Mitveida. So what would be the advantage of gigahertz burst in this case? And uh, actually the answer is that gigahertz burst uh, uh, enables uh, surface polishing. And also depending on the number in gigahertz uh, burst, uh, one can achieve different surface roughness. And in, in this case for stainless steel, uh, uh, they showed that uh, selecting four pulses per gigahertz burst uh, enables surface polishing down to 100 nanometers. So this is uh, already interesting for, for many applications. And uh, if you combine uh, both knowledges, uh, so you can use megahertz and gigahertz burst 
to achieve the really nice results. So first you, you ablate the necessary structure with the megahertz burst, then you switch to gigahertz burst and you polish the surface. Uh, this uh, is very applicable for various uh, tools fabrication. And not only, uh, actually with the megahertz and gigahertz burst, one can achieve uh, high contrast uh, corrosion free markings uh, on the surface of stainless steel. And if you look uh, very closely with uh, optical profile, uh, the black surface has certain ripples and white surface is very smooth. And the interesting here is that in order to fabricate white, first you fabricate the black and on top you fabricate the white. And uh, for again, for medical markings where the uh, chemical resistivity and high contrast is needed uh, by burst uh, might also be useful. Another interesting application uh, is uh, intraocular lens uh, fabrication. Here, again, the same technique. You use a megahertz burst uh, for ablating three dimensional shape uh, of the lens. Uh, but of course the lens is not us usable uh, after this step. Then you switch to gigahertz burst uh, to polish down uh, the surface. And after polishing uh, hydrophilic acrylic surface, uh, as one can clearly see, becomes uh, transparent. And uh, the rough surface roughness, which uh, we managed to achieve is uh, 90 nanometers. Also, you can, uh, by scanning the surfaces, you can change the properties of the surface. Uh, the surface can uh, become a hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Uh, it could be used uh, as well for uh, sensors, various sensors. And finally, some uh, key ideas to take away. So megahertz burst can increase ablation efficiency. Gigahertz burst enable uh, surface polishing. And uh, yeah, by burst is tunable, uh, like a pulse duration, frequency, pulse energy, and it's yet another degree of freedom for optimizing your fabrication process. And uh, by burst fle flexibility unlocks new recipes uh, for sensors and uh, micromedical device fabrication. Thank you. Thank you, Tita, so much. Uh, it was the last presentation today. And now we can ask questions to Titas. And after that, I will invite to ask any questions to all presenters, which you maybe didn't have time to ask before. So we have first question. Uh, which materials is, is hydrophob felicity tested? Okay, so uh, many... Uh, many materials are tested. Um, we do have applications lab, but we do not develop applications. Uh, as you saw in my presentation, uh, I showed the results from uh, other groups, from other companies. Uh, so I believe if you do a quick search, you can find uh, many materials on which you can change the surface uh, vetability. It's not only, uh, metals, um, I believe many materials properties uh, surface can be changed. Thanks. Any more questions to Titas? Yes, we have from Ramona Skotlauskas. Uh, do we have service providers of such service in Lithuania? Yes, and uh, you already met them today, so uh, workshop of Photonics, uh, Havana Technologies. Uh, uh, yeah, so in Lithuania, uh, we have a very compact and uh, uh, collaborative uh, laser society. So uh, you can find many places where to to. to fabricate your samples here in Lithuania. We also, as I mentioned uh, in light conversion, have the app lab. You can send samples to us as well. And 
maybe next year after we build the complete the new building we will have a even bigger apps lab because the current apps lab we have is situated in laser research center uh, but yeah if you have some challenges we can demonstrate uh, our laser capabilities for small scale production maybe workshop of photonics is a good candidate uh, Ramonas, maybe you have uh, the exact uh, issue which you want to solve and you would like to share. Okay, Ramonas, uh, thanks for the answer. Uh, so maybe Tadas Lipinskas has some questions prepared. I have several questions to Titas. First question is about the B-burst and burst regimes of RS lasers. Do, what are the main applications and why do you decide to produce these lasers? What are the, the demand from the market for these lasers? So uh, there are different processes. Some of the processes, uh, they do not require by burst uh, or burst at all. Uh, in our case, uh, we were lucky to develop uh, a laser source, source which can deliver both megahertz and gigahertz uh, bursts. Uh, and it's uh, flexible, you know, you can, uh, as I showed you, you can select uh, how many pulses. And uh, so yet it's another degree of freedom for optimizing the laser processes, because some laser processes uh, do require high frequencies. And uh, for example, glass-to-glass uh, -glass welding, glass-to-metal welding. Uh, it's good to have a low pulse energy, yet high frequency. Uh, if you want to, again, to, to enable certain processes like uh, lens production, and you want to be effective, so first uh, you need megahertz, then you switch to gigahertz. Uh, I'm waiting uh, for, for some nice results actually for, uh, combining both megahertz and gigahertz burst. Uh, if someone uh, develops some nice application, I would be welcome to to put it uh, even on on our web page as a, a success story. Thank you. And uh, second question was about the surface polishing. You showed an example with the steel material as well as lens polishing. So mm -hmm. for the glass polishing. Uh, do you have any experience with that or your customers maybe has? Yeah, for, for, for glass polishing, uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, so glass is a different material. If you heat it up, uh, it cracks. There are some uh, other nice results uh, with the uh, glass uh, using the bi-burst, but uh, I decided not to introduce these results uh, today. Maybe in the near future. Okay, thank you. I have received one general question if the presentations will be shared after event. So I think it will be decision of each presenter. However, uh, what we will do, we will definitely share the recording uh, of this event in Tula's YouTube channel and via social media channels. So you can rewatch this event again. And if uh, presenters will agree to share the presentations, I, I will also be able to share it with uh, event participants. Mm -hmm. So do we have any more questions for Titas? Use your opportunity. Ben, maybe you have some questions for other presenters or some ideas to share after hearing all these nice presentations yeah uh, just uh, like uh, i already mentioned this invitation uh, sharing the success story so uh, if you visit the light conversion web page you can see it. it's it's a rather new web page and we did dedicate it a, a nice section for the applications and actually what we did we gathered the uh, database for the publications so you can uh, easily search for topics uh, and find where the lasers uh, are applicable uh, yeah I, I would like to thank everyone for, for, for really nice presentations and uh, 
uh, I'm really glad to hear that lots of people are using light conversion lasers as as a as a tools for manufacturing other tools. So we still have a, a couple of minutes, maybe 10 minutes left for general questions or general ideas. So it would be nice if somebody has something to add. Uh, uh, I have a general questions maybe to Titas and to Tadas. How do you see the market uh, in general during uh, these pandemic situations and uh, it is increasing, decreasing, maybe which areas are the most optimistic and in, in geographic perspective as well? So what we can do together to reach these markets? So maybe I will start. Uh, so what we saw uh, is actually a slowing down of the market, uh, but uh, it's definitely not a saturation. Lots of projects where people uh, were planning to, to buy lasers, uh, they were not canceled. They were just postponed by a certain uh, uh, period of time during the pandemics. But what we also saw that uh, some new markets, uh, especially fabricating uh, medical devices or prototyping devices uh, emerged. So we see that, that the demand for the femtosecond lasers is not decreasing at all. Here we have also uh, Bruno from NKT Photonics. So maybe Bruno can share their experience uh, within the market. maybe he's not that yeah i'm active yeah sorry can you hear me yes right we have the same uh, you know feedback about you know the market i mean a lot of projects have been postponed clearly uh and the demand is still active clearly Thank maybe others could uh, add something about the china market yeah, I'm current, cu currently in quarantine in China. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> we also see uh, on, one, on one hand, a little bit of hesitance uh, due to uncertainty uh, in, uh, in all markets. Uh, so investments are a little bit hesitant uh, into, into new capital uh, equipment. On the other hand, uh, uh, China bounced back uh, quite quickly, so uh, we, we we still see a lot of potential here, and uh, and probably the to the market here to to bounce back uh, a little bit faster than in Europe and in US. But medical market probably is booming, especially for some consumables. So how we can serve this market, how we can enter for some new applications. Do you see any possibilities? Well, for pandemic consumables, I think the time is uh, probably has passed. We, we saw some examples. Uh, we are working with uh, tooling industry, CNC tooling industry. And uh, at the uh, beginning of the pandemic, uh, everybody was complaining that uh, uh, everything is stopping down and then immediately everybody went into uh, mask supply chain so our cnc uh, tool producers for example started to work uh, 24 7 to, to make mass cutting devices but that that is probably already passed uh, however i think there will be more investment into into research and prevention of uh, and readiness for for the diseases for for testing uh, capabilities so that, that's probably the market that will benefit uh, out of uh, out of the pandemic eventually what's about the sensors production maybe some sensor development some sensing applications would be the very potential in this case. 
maybe we have somebody from uh, from medical sensors uh, market here that could provide some insights. Seems there's no volunteers. So who will answer the question? <laughs> Uh, maybe Thomas Opulskis, if he's still here, would like to add something because uh, he said that all presentations were very interesting and Thomas Opulskis is from intersurgical, so uh, from other side. So Thomas, maybe you have some additional remarks or questions to the presenters. Hi everyone. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was really interesting uh, to know that there is uh, such a lot of uh, good companies around Lithuania. Uh, we have uh, a lot of applications, you know, potential applications uh, in a company. So, you know, um, particularly interested in uh, plastic welding, uh, polypropylene, ABS, polycarbonates, uh, plastic to aluminium welding, uh, laser marking, no additive laser marking of the plastics, you know, and, and uh, things like that so <clears throat> so if uh, so probably an idea uh, from me is that uh, i'm going to contact you know uh, se separate companies uh, uh, directly probably thanks thomas for sharing uh, so i think uh, there could be the last question if we have such, and we could go to the wrap up. Yeah, so I don't see any more questions. So thanks everyone for participating. Uh, thanks to all the speakers for interesting presentations and audience for boosting a nice discussions. And uh, if you are interesting to know more um, of how laser micromachining can be applied for different sectors. Uh, follow Tula's uh, LinkedIn and Tula's Twitter because we will share information about uh, other events on laser micromachining applications. Uh, so uh, we already planned the next topic. So next topic will be focused on laser micromachining applications on photovoltaics and semiconductors. And it will take place on um, July, 13. So you are very welcome to join. And afterwards, we will have some other topics like automotive, precision optics production, and consumer ele electronics. And these uh, uh, seminars should take place uh, in autumn this year. So thanks again for participating. And I wish to everyone to have a very nice uh, start of a summer, which has started today. Thanks, Bye, Maria. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.